Hey, a while back we made a video about RVing in Europe. And one of the things we mentioned there is the RV size is limited because of the license. I'm sitting here in Belgium today, and that kind of brings up another point. Licenses can also be limiting to your size of an RV in the United States as well. A lot of people don't think that's true, but we're gonna explore on this video why you need to go look at your license or you might be driving illegally. In the United States, for most RVs, you don't need a special driver's license. However, if your RV, as a single unit or what combined with the trailer, exceeds 26,000 pounds, and in some states a certain length, like 40 feet, then you may need a special driver's license. Reading the forums and people's posts on Facebook, though, there's a great deal of argument about this, and some people are getting it flat out wrong. Specifically, people talking about the states of Texas and North Carolina. Those are two states I'm very familiar with because I've lived in both states, I've had driver's license in both states, and I'm a licensed attorney in both states. And I will tell you what people believe about those two states is wrong and probably about a lot of other states. And this may include the state you live in. So let's go over what states require what so you'll know if you're driving illegally. Before I go too far down the road of this, I just wanna make one quick point. Why I'm a licensed attorney, this video is just for entertainment and is not legal advice. You need to seek out your own legal advice and nothing about this video is creating a attorney-client relationship. So use this as some background information and then go look up your state laws or talk to your personal attorney to make sure you're in compliance with the law. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna basically say that the state fall into three different categories. And that's because each state has its own laws regarding driver's license, but they seem to follow basically three different categories. Some states require a non-CDL special driver's license if your RV is over a certain weight, or states like California, over a certain length. In other states, a type two category is they require a actual CDL if you're over those certain weights or thresholds. And then the third category, states like Florida, require nothing special, regardless of the weight or size of your RV. So how do you know which one you fit into? Well, that's gonna take a little bit of work. And that's why I see people get it wrong when we talk about the state of North Carolina and Texas. Both those states have some tricky language in their statute that confuses people. It even confuses people down at the DMV. What do I mean by that? When people go to look up their statute in states like North Carolina and Texas, they'll find a statute that says you do not need a CDL for an RV. RVs are exempt from CDL. They'll find that and they'll think, I'm done here. I don't need to look any further. And you'll see that those lines from those statutes quoted all over the internet of people who will debate you to the end that you don't need a special driver's license because the statute says you don't need a CDL. And part of the confusion here is those states have what's called a non-CDL special license. When we talk about CDLs and there's different kinds of endorsements, et cetera, normally we're talking about a class B. Think about that as like a bus, a license to drive a, a big commercial bus or a class A, that's like your, your semi trucks or a big truck and trailer. And so they'll say, I don't need a class A because my state says I don't need a CDL and here's the statute. But if they'd read further into the code, what they'd find out is they're right. They don't need a class A or class B CDL, but those states and several others actually have enacted that you do need a class A non-CDL or a class B non-CDL. Now, basically in North Carolina, for example, if your truck and your trailer combine for a weight of over 26,000 pounds, you're pulling a travel trailer or in this case, probably a fifth wheel, then you're going to need a class A non-CDL. Same thing with Texas. North Carolina, Texas are the same there. This RV, the Brinkley 3610, weighs just enough that with this trailer and any truck capable of pulling it, you're going to need, in the state of North Carolina, in Texas, and a lot of other states, we'll cover that, a 
non-CDL Class A driver's license. Now, if I had a big Class A and my Class A was over 26,000 pounds, then I would need at least a Class B non-CDL in those days. Though a Class A would work. Class A is considered a higher form of driver's license, so it would cover both, but then you have the Class B. So, and if you were towing with your Class A in a trailer, you have a big Class A that weighs 26,001 pounds, and you're gonna pull a trailer that weighs more than 10,000 pounds, then you need a Class A anyway. So really, probably best just to get the Class A. Now, just so you know, every state's a little bit different. I just was talking about North Carolina with the Class A and Class B, uh, and uh, Texas has a very similar requirement. But there are a lot of states that have this requirement, but they may not necessarily call it the Class A or Class B, and they may have some minor differences. For example, in California, you can trigger it with weight or the length of your vehicle if it's over, I believe, 40 feet. You'll definitely want to look that up. And in some states, they may call it something different. I think, for example, I think South Carolina has something called a Class E driver's license. But later, I wrote down the states here that I think require a non-commercial special driver's license. This is at the time I put this together. Laws change all the time. So you'll definitely want to go check the law and make sure this is current. And once again, don't rely on me. Look it up yourself. So this includes states like California, Maryland, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, New York, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Texas, and Wyoming. And by the way, I see people from all those states swearing up and down, giving advice on Facebook and other posts that you don't need a special license. Well, they're wrong. And then there's, uh, I think New York has what they call an endorsement. It's an R endorsement for this driver's license series. So like I said, check your state. It'll all be a little different, but basically the states I just listed, to my knowledge, are the ones that require a special non-CDL driver's license. We'll turn from those states to the ones that require an actual CDL. CDL stands for commercial driver's license. They just say, if you meet these categories, we don't care if you're doing it for hire or not, you have to get a commercial license. There's only a few states that do this, and it kind of follows the same thing. If it's a class A without a trailer over 10,000 pounds, you're probably going to need a class B license. If it is a truck pulling a trailer, you're probably gonna need a class A license. So those are, it's gonna be basically that same pattern, but this time you're getting a CDL. Why is that important? There's a lot of additional requirements when you have to travel with a CDL uh, that are mandated by both federal and state law. Once again, this can vary by states, but the states that require a CDL, if you exceed certain thresholds, normally being over 26,000 pounds, is going to be Arkansas, Connecticut, Hawaii, yep, yeah, Hawaii, <laughs> Kansas, New Mexico, Washington, D.C., and Wisconsin. So as I look through here, look at the states. It's not a big list, and I think some people will be surprised that they'll if they buy a 3610 and a dually to pull it, they're going to need an actual CDL. Then we hit the states that don't require anything special. If it's a recreational vehicle and you're not doing it for compensation, you're not doing it for profit, you're not doing it for pay, you're not doing it for a commercial reason, then you're just exempt. You don't need any special endorsement. You don't need a special license. You're free to go, buy the biggest RV you want, and hit the road with your standard plain old Class C driver's license. And those states include Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Montana, Nebraska, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Rhode Island, and South Dakota. Like I said, double check them before you go out there and start driving. Make sure the law hasn't changed. Check with your local authorities. Check with your statute. Check with your local attorney. But believe those are the states that require nothing special at all. So what do you do if you find yourself buying an RV that you realize it's a little big and you're going to need a special driver's license? Well, that's how I found myself when we bought this. I actually did not realize that I needed a special driver's license when I ordered this RV. But I started thinking about it while it was on order and I had seen on Facebook, which you should never rely on, that, you know, 
RVs were exempt from commercial driver's license in the state of North Carolina. But being a lawyer, I decided I better go take a look at the statute. And that's when I found that's true. They're exempt from commercial driver's license. But you need a non-commercial <laughs> Class A driver's license if your tow vehicle and your trailer exceed 26,000 pounds. So then I had to figure out how to take that test. I went down to the DMV. I had to take a written test. It's the same test they get for a commercial driver's license. But I took it. And then I had to come back with a vehicle that qualifies to require the Class A and take a driving test. Now, that was hard because I couldn't find anyone to drive me to the DMV to take the driving test. I needed someone with a Class A to drive me there. And I, I looked and I looked and I couldn't find anyone. So I presented to the DMV with my truck and trailer. How it got there, I don't know. But... After I finished driving, I had my driver's license and I was able to drive it home. So what I would tell you is look around your community, try to find someone else who has a Class A driver's license that can drive you there uh, because they may ask, how did you get here? And you don't want to get in trouble. I will tell you that I've never really heard of anyone getting in trouble for this particular thing, though I'm sure it's happened. But I did do some searches and some looks and I couldn't find any. I actually asked some law enforcement friends that were state troopers and they had indicated they had never written a ticket for it. My gut feeling is it's not checked a whole lot, but the second you get into some sort of accident, your fault or not, then I think that there'll probably be some scrutiny and you'll definitely want to make sure you have the license. There's also some videos online from different states that claim that they do stops and check for this. There's one I actually saw for Indiana, where the state trooper on there said that this is a check they make to make sure that people who are driving through the state have the appropriate license for the state that they're coming from, which is another important point. You need to comply with the state of your residency, the place that issues your driver's license. In the United States, once you have that driver's license, you can drive in every state with it with your vehicle as long as you maintain your residency where you have your driver's license. If you change residency, you may have to change your requirement. This creates kind of an odd situation, actually. Um, for example, if you lived next to a state that doesn't require a special driver's license, then your friend, who maybe just lives a few miles down the road but across the state line, can drive in your state legally with a the a large travel trailer or a large fifth wheel and truck combo that are over 26,000 pounds with no special driver's license and he's good to go, it's a safe driver. But you, in that same state, your home state, started driving around the same without a special driver's license, could get in trouble, could get fined, could get a ticket. It doesn't really seem fair. The same thing could happen if I'm from North Carolina and I have my special driver's license uh, I can drive around to states that maybe have different requirements and I'll be fine. But also if I was from a state like Alabama and uh, there was no special license required for me, I could still drive through North Carolina, through South Carolina, through all the other states that require special license. And because of the full faith and credit clause in our constitution, I'd be perfectly fine. I could just drive straight through those states. If I got pulled over I, or if I got in a wreck, I wouldn't be in trouble for the status of my driver's license. So that kind of sums up the uh, driver's license issue here. Make sure you're legal. You definitely want to be legal and definitely check the laws of your state. Thanks.